Because the Beijing flight, as we know, is six hours. And international uh, safety requirements require you to put about 10% or one or two hours more. So that just in case you have to fly from Beijing to Shanghai or Tokyo before you land. So in a six hour flight, you have eight hours of fuel. But how do we know that actually this plane had full petrol? And, and number two, if it did, will we be surprised if all the records asking for full petrol have disappeared from Mars or petrol Mars or whoever supplies? It could have disappeared. Cannot be ruled out. Remember immigration records? <laughs> yeah. And if that theory is correct, then the plane actually could have flown for four hours more and we are looking at the wrong place. It could be the South Pole and Antarctica, or it went up north, it could be much higher up. Can anybody tell me as a matter of fact that that never happened? And, number, and the next question is, uh, can we also rule out as a matter of definite fact that our air, air, air traffic control did not have communications with Captain Zari and the co-pilot? But they keep saying that they had no communications. How do we know? Do we really trust them? They could, they could have been having communications. Or with the hijacker. They could have. And all that is erased. Because you can erase things. So again, those are questions. Because, and why do we ask these questions? Because it is not an honest, transparent system. And then I end by saying, just three or four very recent um, developments after 1st of May. And I just think, I, I mentioned Ishaguddin's Four Corners, Ishaguddin's Four Corners uh, interview. And in that interview, he, he accepted that the military and the civil authorities share air traffic control facilities in Suma. So the rumor that they are in one building is correct. They share one building. And then the, the military was told to keep an eye on MH370 on the radar, but they allowed it to disappear uh, because they said it's non, non hostile. And then, this best, uh, in its turn back, Hishabun uh, is saying MH370 flew directly above the military air base in Penang, which did nothing. So, this tells me actually the, the guy had a sense of humor. Whoever is doing it had a sense of humor, whether it's the hijacker or the pilot. He's laughing at our, our system and say, say, say flying at 5,000 feet over our, over our military base and our, our chums are sleeping. And that's Ishaguddin saying that. And then uh, the next piece of information is on the 27th of May, people started asking the question, hey, is Imazat correct finally? Imaza is finally some oh, eight British people sitting out of London giving their opinion. Now, from him, which is why he was tied with the Prime Minister believing these people. When actually, if you stop and think, actually, this Imaza has become world famous. Imaza has become world famous thanks to MH370. So they had free public relations exercise thanks to us. And they, for all you know, they could have been one big fairy tale. And in fact, today, as I was this morning and then this evening before I came to the chance uh, to the speak, uh, BBC is reporting in Maza saying, today, this is their latest excuse today, they are saying, well, actually, Australians are, not, are looking at the wrong place. They are not looking further down. So come on, uh, ridiculous. And the final statement I want to say is the US Navy on the 28th of May said, Anyway, according to our of our Ocean Engineering Division, the four pins did not come from MH's black box. So it is. I mean, so I'm afraid. Although it's a, it's a massive tragedy for the family, um, it, it was conducted in such a farcical manner that in many ways one has to laugh about it. But of course, you can't. I accept the gravity, and, and so it is it's a massive tragedy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for that very colourful narration. Uh, indeed, there are many, many questions which remain unanswered. Uh, now, I would like to invite our last speaker, Mr. Vikitsyan. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. 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 Thank you
Streets of Lacker, South China Sea, Streets of Lacker, Northern Corridor, Southern Corridor, and now as uh, Tommy has mentioned, today they, they must have said, well, uh, they didn't go south enough. <laughs> mm, this, they, they were distracted uh, by, for two months, for two months they were uh, searching, searching uh, under sea, uh, under sea and uh, uh, for the black box, got, uh, the, 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 the four pigs, which finally they, just, they, they decided they come from the black box. Out of the four pigs, they come from the black box. And that, that, there was a hot spot that the uh, must have analyzed, they did not go. Instead, uh, it was shot off that place. But then before that, there were people who said that it probably was not in the south, probably was uh, elsewhere. So up to now, we still don't know exactly where it is. The, uh, Boeing 777. And as Tommy mentioned, the, one of the, the important days was uh, March 24th. And on March 24th, the PM announced for the reason that uh, MH370 ended its journey in the South Indian Ocean. When it ended its journey, it's very, and the MAS uh, sent out the condolence messages saying that, uh, sorry, uh, all, the, you know, all your loved ones have perished, and then the, the consequential actions that have been taken. And the very next day, the Prime Minister made one of his rare appearances in Parliament. So when Tommy says, uh, do you know a lot from PM? We don't need it. We don't need have a missing. Uh, 370, we have a missing Prime Minister. <laughs> so we have a, there are a disaster of tragedy and a twin disaster and tragedy of two, of two missing uh, events of the 370 and the Prime Minister. But one of his rare appearances on the 25th of uh, March, he came and tabled a condolence motion. <laughs> condolence motion, very, very compassionate, very uh, heartrending. But in, my, in, in that the motion I said, you are trying to, to find a crucial. Of course, one crucial. I'm sure even the, 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 the families of the 239 the, the passengers and crew affected, they want a crucial. That was 24th. Already three weeks uh, from the 8th to the 24th is already uh, 16 days. It's already very uh, heart rending. They want a closure. They're looking for a closure. But it must be a real closure. Your closure is uh, is a closure without closure. <laughs> Where is the debris? <coughs> and if there's no debris, where's the wreckage? Where are the signs and evidence of debris and wreckage? You was there. And I said, uh, this is unfair because you are saying that the, that the plane perished or died. Where is the evidence? And if you, if you don't have any, any evidence, it is unacceptable. Nobody can accept it. It is not a question at all. He listened, kept quiet, and subsequently the uh, acting transport minister, the, the defense minister, Hisham Odin, argued he never said that they died. Huh? He tried to say, he said, he never, um, that they, he never said they perished. He always said the journey, end, the journey ended. What does it mean? <laughs> journey ended, they died. Uh. <laughs> How can you be? So it is, that's why I am angry. I understand because I, I don't know. We feel anger. I am angry. How can you make such a statement that the journey has ended, that, that they have all perished when there is no evidence, no whatsoever, whether it is in the South Indian Ocean or in other areas? So that is the, the treasure of this. So the question, as I said, and uh, before when we, the, the parliament met, that at minimum, there must be a white paper. At least you want a, a progress report. If the Australian Parliament, when they seek a, a, a vote for, 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 for the search uh, operations to be passed by the Australian Parliament, they, they, they went to Parliament to seek a vote and there was a debate, that could be done in the Australian Parliament. Why it was not? It was not done in the Malaysian Parliament. There should be at least a progress report, at least after some uh, three months when uh, we were meeting, uh, Parliament was recommending on the 9th of, uh, of uh, June, and then there must be a full debate as to whether there should be a Royal Commission Inquiry or a Parliamentary uh, Select Committee. And I still think there should be a Parliamentary Select Committee because all these questions that were raised, they cannot be answered. Even if there's a Parliamentary Select Committee, we, cannot, we will not be able to find answers to all the questions, but we may be able to get some answers. Some answers whether there was a turnback, why? 
if there was a turn back, they came up with all these uh, uh, pretensions, uh, misleading neighboring countries to search some, some Chinese. That's one aspect. Secondly, was what happened during the first few hours, and those are the most crucial, critical first few hours. When was trending? And who was responsible for the for the period of scrambling? Is it because that uh, they were uh, having a, a, having a nap? If that is the case, then you know in the Auditor General's report, we have very expensive alarm clocks. They should be sent to the, all these uh, uh, radar operators so that uh, they cannot they cannot be sleeping away. And heads must roll. If uh, there are people who are negligent, who are, who have failed in their duties, heads must roll. There must be accountability. And as in the, the, the as in our operation, the search and the rescue operation, as uh, Junhua mentioned, four and a half hours. Why four and a half hours? Why it took so long? And when? And, then, and that is the question I've been asking. When was the first time that the prime minister was informed? Was first notified? When was the first time that the Ishamuddin, as the acting transport minister, was first notified? Because it's important. Because in the entire uh, 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 operating procedure, once there is an emergency of that nature, the PM should be informed. When? We don't know. We, 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 we can only guess from uh, what was told by FLOM. It was FLOM. The first lady of Malaysia. <laughs> there was a story she said that on that morning, no. Wow, she was supposed to go for some function. And she, and she was late. It was supposed to be at a clock. She went there, like something. Then they, why? She said, you should try to contact the, the Prime Minister. Because uh, she was contacted about this uh, missing plane. must inform the Prime Minister and couldn't contact the Prime Minister. Even she had difficulty getting the getting through to the Prime Minister. And from all accounts, unless the uh, throne was not telling the truth, it was for 9.30 or something like that the Prime Minister was informed. How can? How, how can that be? Something is wrong with the whole system. And when we are each other in? Maybe very much later. So these are things which if there is a parliamentary committee headed by if the parliamentary committee headed by P by BN, they would never ask us allow us questions to be asked. And they said it must be headed by PR. By Pakar Chat. So these questions too. There will be uh, no impediments to a full inquiry and the question exactly a whole series of them. And I think this is important because uh, there is no doubt that uh, Malaysia's uh, reputation has seriously suffered. Just only today, there was this, uh, there's been uh, endless write, uh, write ups, reports, uh, uh, analysis about uh, what happened. And it's because of the inability to find wreckage exactly where it's the plane it has to give rise to thousand and one uh, conspiracy theories. Of course, not thousand and one, at least uh, more than a thousand conspiracy theories. Uh, whether there was a mechanical failure, whether there was uh, hijacking, whether there was uh, uh, even uh, 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 remote control, uh, the over CIA involvement, even our beloved former Prime Minister uh, Dr. Mahathir also was quite prone to accept all these conspiracy theories. And uh, I was just reading today the latest news by Christ Goodfellow, who in the early days of the MH370 disaster had given his own theory. Then, the, uh, of course, he was a uh, former pilot. Then he didn't think that there was anything uh, uh, wrong with the pilots. He didn't think that it was probably a mechanical uh, uh, problem, a failure. But one thing is, is this paragraph that he said. Only one thing is certain. Malaysia has lost all credibility <laughs> in regard to the MH370 investigation and should yield control to a competent and impartial authority. Of course, I'm not saying that uh, I would agree that uh, when he said that uh, that is why I believe matters should be turned over to Britain's Air Excellence Investigation Branch because he felt that they were more impartial and be more independent. But the whole question is no doubt. The question of uh, accountability, the question of our crisis management needs very much to be desired. And this goes back to the whole question of our system of governance. I think the, the, the details uh, and the Tommy has, uh, has dealt with. The logic 
macro issue of our system of government. What we want is not is minimum government, maximum governance. Minimum governance, maximum government. Yeah? What we have, what Najib is doing is maximum government, minimum governance. What we should have is maximum governance, minimum government. This must be accountability, there's no accountability. What is the role of uh, the RMRI people, the DCA people, the uh, MS people, the Prime Minister, the Finance uh, Minister, the Acting the Transport Minister, their role uh, and, and the responsibilities up to now. We are still at a loss. Just in the last few days, you can see how ridiculous our system of uh, governance is. We have so many laws, but never has Malaysia been so lawless. <laughs> nah? We have so many laws, but never has Malaysia been so lawless. We have the IGP, number one, the, the guardian of law, but it's a law. We are now, uh, only yesterday, uh, uh, the minister in the Prime Minister's Department in charge of uh, Islamic Affairs. Usurping the powers of the Prime Minister and the powers of the Minister of Law and Constitution talking about whether Malaysia is a secular state or not a secular state. There is no province, no business of a Minister of Islamic Affairs to talk about in Parliament. It should be the Prime Minister. If not the Prime Minister, it should be the Minister for Law and Constitution. And who is the Minister for Law and Constitution? Nancy. Before that, Nazri. What has happened? So this whole system has uh, broken down. Judiciary, governance, no wonder the MH370 has become uh, a, a, a subject, a, an issue where Malaysians uh, could, couldn't hold a its high. And I think it's important for the civil society. I think uh, it's already 101 days in order to come forward to demand accountability, um, to demand as, uh, 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 we can, of course, uh, since we couldn't have it, they are unable to find the, the, the missing 370, have all the answers, but at least some of the answers we should be able to establish that. Uh, make it very clear that we can accept the position that has been taken by the government that until the rate that the plane is found, there will be no uh, investigation of any nature. And uh, I think this, uh, this forum in particular is in order to try to take a, a greater public awareness of this issue to send a message to the Prime Minister and to the government that we expect greater accountability and a better system of governance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lim. Uh, we would like to now open to the floor for any questions. Uh, may I ask that if you have any questions, please introduce yourself first and then you can direct your questions to any member of our panel. Better still, you have any insights that you can share. So we are in the year of industry. Any insights that you can share? I'm a reporter from Bumming Ladies. And we followed this uh, incident for the long of uh, three months ago. Uh, actually, so I want to ask the first question is, uh, what's the purpose that you guys do this, organize these panels for the forum for? Because I think this is, because the case haven't closed yet, until now we haven't known where is the plane is, right? And then, um, I think, uh, are you guys the experts to explain the things uh, where the plane is? If yes, um, can you uh, can you go to the uh, right authorities to uh, state about this? And then, um, do you think this forum that will bring another hurt for the families? That's all. Thank you. Thank you. 
But I think that to answer your question, we must look at what has not been told to us by the Malaysian government. Um, they've omitted to tell us so many material things, so there's massive omissions. And when they release information, as I said, on a piecemeal, uh, piecemeal fashion, uh, from time to time, uh, it's often inaccurate. So you ask for the families. I mean, I don't know if there are any families here, but surely one can assume that the families would want to know the truth. So I, I, I started my contribution by saying that the, one of the functions of this uh, forum, as I see it, is to try and I, uh, find out what actually happened. But we all are suffering from a handicap, a massive handicap, uh, because we just don't know the facts. So we have as much a, a right to express our opinion as, as the government, because they have not been frank. And I, I think the best example of that was when the, when the transport minister was interviewed in the Four Corners program in Australia. You should watch it on net. Uh, and to so many of her questions, the, to the lady, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, to viewers' questions, he kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. And that was really terrible. If you are the minister of transport, and two and a half months after the accident, you still don't know uh, the facts, then it's terrible you don't master the brief. So we are trying to fill up that gap, that is a gap of information mm -hmm. here, doing our teeny mini bit uh, by, by trying to understand the facts. Yes, uh, the objective of this event was uh, answered by Mr. Dominoes and uh, one of the members of family. Actually, we, I had contacted the, one of the members of family through their, their, their social media and they didn't oppose this uh, event. They didn't say that uh, we shouldn't organize this event. Thanks. In fact, I believe the families were like answers uh, to question to, to the question is where they are available. Of course, it's not possible to find exactly where, but because you were known until the, the plane is found. But as from the last 100 days, what happened, how the government has conducted itself, whether in a competent, efficient manner, or whether it has failed, I'm sure it will, be, it will uh, contribute uh, to the lessening of the grief of the affected uh, the next of kin. If they can be answers, for, for instance, whether there was uh, a comeback, whether why there was no scrambling, why uh, uh, the, the search in the South China Sea and then the Straits of Malacca and the Andaman Sea and then the Bay of Bengal and the Northern and Southern Corridor because they will want to know the truth. So it is, it is in order to assuage also their concern. I may be wrong, but I believe in the, fam the fact that families are asked whether they want even these uh, uh, answers to be found, although the final issues are still to be determined because the final issues will not be able to ascertain until uh, it is found, until the brain is found, which can be one year, which can be a uh, hope. If, of course, if you are fortunate, we, if, uh, one month, two months, or one year, two years, I mean, the whole thing cannot be held in suspense. So I think this is in order to have a greater, to help. Impossible to have a foreclosure, but it towards a closure. And I think uh, a responsible government would not delay a full, uh, as much as by inquiry in the areas where it is possible answers to be given. This question is for YB Kitian. Uh, YB, just uh, let's just say that uh, you were the transport minister. What would you have been? Uh, what would you have done differently? And also, I think one of the uh, critical points in the search and rescue was the, there was an article saying that uh, probably Malaysia should have given the search and rescue efforts to a country that had experienced. Uh, such a tragedy or similar tragedies like America, would you have given the 
search and rescue efforts to be handled by America or different countries, or you still think that Malaysia should have handled the search and rescue efforts? Thank you. Well, I'm not a transport minister, but I can say that uh, any efficient and competent transport minister who is, uh, uh, will ensure that there will be a full transparency and uh, accountability as to the whole operation. And uh, if the Malaysian uh, uh, civil servants are incapable of uh, conducting a competent uh, 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 full rescue operation as well as a uh, uh, full up operation, then of course you must think in terms of an international uh, international operation. But if you are, if we have Malaysians who can do so, then I think we should have full confidence in our own uh, Malaysians. So it's a question of. Uh, uh, of uh, where we are today. Actually, they can carry out the search and rescue and uh, searching the mission forever. 
until the stage that uh, they satisfy, it may take 10 years, 10 years, even 100 years until the stage they satisfy. So, but they also can uh, call off the uh, search mission also. That if they are satisfied that they can't find it uh, anyway or eventually, they, they can do it. Yeah, thanks. I think the proposal of six months is uh, reasonable, but whether it should be six months or not is something that can be further pursued. I think we can leave in the families, the representatives, and the government of the day. But I, I think uh, I think it's understandable there should be some form, not uh, not be a closure, some form of uh, in order to so we can start leading their lives. Maybe there's something they should uh, uh, organize themselves, get a lawyer, and I'm sure Tom Thomas is uh, prepared to help uh, on that matter. Uh, question about uh, those responsible. I agree, in principle, the case must rule for those, whether in civil or military uh, uh, services, for any negligence of you, negligence and direction of duty. But there must be a, 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 a fair uh, process, a due process, that type of inquiry. We cannot just uh, not uh, uh, chop it and all that. That's why we want to have a full inquiry and uh, one way we have a voluntary sector committee and all those who have a chance to defend themselves. As for uh, pushing everything to members of parliament, you say that they are responsible to making ensure to ensure that the laws are just and they are justly implemented. Well, I don't think it is uh, uh, that is a, uh, a fair picture. It's not the Parliament uh, MPs themselves uh, cannot uh, themselves ensure all that. Only if we have a new government, that is your change in the strategy. Can I just answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. In a typical Malaysian fashion, uh, no, there, there's no investigation, there's no due process, there's no uh, finding out of facts to, to punish any people, to punish the wrongdoers. Instead of what happens is, you get promoted. Uh, so I, I was told that the army chief got an extended contract. Well, one of the army chiefs, isn't it? One of their contracts was extended, they got a two year extension. Uh, I vaguely remember re reading that. Um, so, but anyway, what Akin Siang said is correct. You must investigate uh, and then find out the facts. And then if people were sleeping, they must be sacked. But that's exactly what they look, what our government doesn't want to, to happen. Our government always covers up things. It's always covering up. That's been a track record. And there's no reason why you're going to part. But the, uh, the very important fact here is to find out when Hisham would be new. As Kinsian said, was, uh, uh, Ishapurin was both transport minister, so in charge of Mars, and uh, a defense minister, uh, and therefore Air Force and all comes under him. So by sheer coincidence, he was having the two relevant ministries uh, in, uh, in, uh, under him, the two portfolios were under him. So it is very important to find out when he was told, because we now know uh, or, or the assumption that the turn back took place, that the military and the civilian radars discovered it, each was telling the other, they were watching it friendly, didn't do anything. Now this must be happening at about 1.32, 2.33. Did any of them have the common sense to say, look, somebody should have said, look, you know, this is something very unusual, should we not tell our minister? Because if they did not have that common sense, in a sense, it's not Hishamuddin's fault. Because he, as is entitled to like all of us, he is entitled to a good night's sleep. So he is sleeping uh, on Saturday night at 3 o'clock, 3.34 like the rest of us. The burden is on the people on the ground, civilians and um, uh, 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 military, when they are seeing something except, exceptional, probably first time in their life, to say, hey, warning bells, we better tell the minister. So if they actually telephone the minister at 3 o'clock, we don't know. And if he says, no, why are you disturbing me and go back to sleep? Uh, that's negligence. Uh, we don't know, we just don't know. But, but if he had known about it and didn't do anything, he's personally accountable. But if he did not know about it, and if he only knew about it at about 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, there's very little he can do. Because the plane has already gone, where's our Air Force? Our Air Force cannot scramble. That's the so timing matters. Uh, let's see. There must be some 
signals. Alright, but I don't think the print is being clear. Even though let's say the print is clear, it is about five kilometers detail. The current is so strong, right? Something will sweep the print and something will come up floating. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Or not? I just want your opinion. So I don't know that <laughs> <laughs> If it landed softly, then it will manage to uh, maintain its uh, the airflame and the body, then it won't crash badly. But uh, if it landed uh, badly uh, instantly, then it will uh, decompose immediately. Let's say it landed gently. Yeah. Five kilometers deep, right? But the current, undercurrent, is so strong. It will keep and something will come up with the Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. I think the print, what I look at is the print is not in the ocean. Yeah, that is what I raised in my the, the first few lines that uh, we have to determine where was the uh, airplanes because uh, we, if we don't know the last location of the airplane, we can't find the debris, the wreckage. It's very hard for us. The Indian Ocean is so big, so vast, so wide. So, um, according to my knowledge, they just have such about 60,000 kilometers square, uh, uh, 60,000 square kilometers only. So, but however, the Indian Ocean itself is more than 10 million uh, square kilometers. So, we, without identifying the, the last known location, it's very hard for you. Because the DB, the DB is my floating somewhere else, just in, in the Indian Ocean, that we just don't know only. But uh, I just want to add something about uh, the objective of holding, uh, help, uh, holding this event and forum because um, I believe that only through identifying the root causes and the problems of the whole scenario then we can improve ourselves. Not only ourselves, improve the authority performance also. Without holding much more this kind of forum, I think the people don't even know how to ask to question the authority. This forum is aimed at uh, to equip you with the related uh, knowledge. Thanks. Yeah, just before that, maybe uh, just uh, raising on that, on uh, the question of the vastness and uh, how uh, humongous is the uh, Indian Ocean. We don't about, talk about the ocean, we talk about the northern and the southern corridor is enough because uh, according to this is uh, some useful information. The, the transport minister has mentioned at that time that uh, the MH370 search area covered 2.24 million square nautical miles. 2.24 million uh, square nautical miles. Large enough to contain almost 2 billion Boeing 777s. Not million, billion. B I L L I O N G. Uh, you can have a 2 billion Boeing 777s encompassing about 1.5% of the world. So that is uh, an idea of, of the vastness of the, just only the northern and southern corridor. Right. Good evening, uh, I'm Su Lin, reporter from Malay Mail Online. Uh, my question is for Mr. Tommy Thomas. Um, do you think that the search coordinators should not solely rely on, on data from Inverset? Because so far, that's basically the only piece of data that we rely on. So do you think we should question that and the searches should not just rely on Inverset alone? Well, I think now it's too late. I mean, it's it, it, hundred days is just too late. I mean, I I, for, I go back to where I always say the, the critical things, the critical facts were the first four hours, and once we miss that little window, say up to three o'clock, four o'clock, then it is just impossible. So in many ways, looking at four o'clock, five o'clock on Saturday morning and today, hundred days later and two years forward is about the same. You are looking not for a needle in a haystack, you are looking for a haystack. For, you know, so it is just impossible to, to discover it. And whether Imaza is right now, I think that is so technical um, and that's where I would be critical of the Prime Minister 
In, a, in many ways, the Prime Minister is like all of us in the room. We are lay persons insofar as the Imasa technical advice is going to be. Because it is very high powered science and scientific stuff and sound audio, which probably nobody in Malaysia understands or Malaysia's cleverest physicists in our university, if there is such a person. So it is lay people like us listening to these experts and then making a judgment call. Very dangerous. Dangerous to do. And just when they ask the, the, not, the human reaction should be, no, can we wait please? Can we listen to other people? Why am I listening to only you? Can I get 25 other experts? There's no need to rush and choose the Mazar. And of course, as I said, they benefited. They got free policy. The amount of money spent on searching, who is going to pay? Yeah, it will be paid by um, our patient government. And that's the uh, Answering that the questions about the Imasa, should we rely only on Imasa? Like what I have, what I, uh, I have shown you just now. Indonesian air defense radar didn't detect NH370. Did they uh, put into account this uh, technical data also? If they really have checked their raw data, Indonesian air defense radar also, I think they might can uh, eliminate the possibility that MH370 flew to south of Indian Ocean. But, but can, we, can, we, can we trust the Indonesian data? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not only Indonesia, including Indian Ocean. Uh, I'm from Free Malaysia today. Uh, I want to ask that Ajisha uh, Modi probably said that the first phase uh, is 27.6 million spent only and it's the lowest. What's your comments regarding this uh, his statement? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, finally, that's only the three phase, uh, first phase, la. we're now in the third phase already. La. And uh, also, they say that the, 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 the other countries will bear their, their separate costs. Whether they will or not, is to be seen. Whether there will be a political will to continue to spend money uh, is a big question mark because finally, uh, uh, if you don't have a political will and everybody is not prepared to chip in, then uh, where, where do we stand? You know, it's not easier that uh, we have to bear the, the brunt of it. And uh, I think that is uh, uh, there's a big question mark. Huh? Why do we put ourselves in that position of uh, a, a bottomless uh, pit of expenditure? Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, here I'm going to ask a question. Uh, my name is Arasu. Okay. My question is, uh, number one is to Mr. Lam. Huh? Would you mind uh, showing the slide on the Air France uh, rescue effort? Because you did mention something about uh, MAS there, you know. Not here, not here. Okay, okay. Um, not this, I think the next one. No, no, no. Right. Uh, you see, here you mentioned about uh, responsibility taken by Brazilian Air Traffic Control as well as Dhaka ADC. But for the MAS case, you mentioned about Malaysia Airlines. I wonder why in this case you are talking about ADC, but for MH370 you pinpointing it to Malaysia Airlines. I just wonder why. There's a difference, you know. Here it's a control authority, air traffic control, you mentioned. But in another slide, you did mention that MAS was slow. I just want to know, why are you talking about an airline that is slow, whereas in this case you talk about air traffic control in charge? That's my first question. 
Right? Next one. Huh? I want everyone here to understand. Aviation industry is a very highly regulated industry. Every aspect of its operation is documented. I'm just going to touch on cargo operations. Huh? Cargo operations. When an aircraft, before it takes off to another country, every content of it is not only known to the departure from at the departure point, but the receiving side also will know. So, for us to continue believing that there was um, uh, 2,900 kilos of unidentified cargo. We cannot accept it. All I'm trying to say is, especially members of the public and in particular media, please do your research to find out how airline industry functions. It's highly regulated. There is no way we can have cargo that is not identified. Because if such a thing happens, you know what is the implication? An airline flies over so many countries. You think those countries will allow an airline to fly with unidentified cargo? It won't. So there is no way we should accept unidentified cargo 2,900 kgs. And please, again, don't fault the airline. In a situation like this, the airline has a responsibility to forward all information to the head of investigation. And who is the head of investigation in this case? Mr. Lam, you can tell me. You mean the international telephone? No, no, no. I'm talking about this case. Who is the head of investigation? It is not the airline, but who? Yes. yes. It's the government authority. Don't, don't say DCA. It's a government authority. The airline has a responsibility to share all information with the investigating authority. Okay, that's point number one. Number two, whoever seeks information, don't knock the doors of the airline. Because the airline is only responsible to the family members of those who who are missing, the next of kin. So if we don't understand this role clearly, we are knocking the doors of the airline and putting a lot of pressure on them, whereas the investigating authority which has all the information is sitting back, enjoying the fun. That shouldn't be the case. Shouldn't be the case. All information about cargo I'm just giving a suggestion uh, to everyone who seems to have international contacts. Why don't you all ask Beijing, hey, don't you know what the contacts were? I'll tell you why. Before a flight leaves here to US, uh, the US already knows who are the passengers, who, what is in the country. I'm sure you know Mr. Lam. And why are we still looking for answers? What about the unidentified cargo? We should be able to get the answer. And we should pressure the government. Now, incidentally, do you all remember after the MH370, who went to China? Even when the Sultan died, came back and then fly back again, you know? What actually happened? Was it just for pandas? We should actually ask all these questions, you know. Now, I'm just going one more step further. Whenever China says something, that they have detected something, the other axis, Australia, UK and US, they are very quick to say, hey, no. Do you all realize this, Amma? And I feel that it has got to do with the consignment of cargo which is still not identified. So let's put our hearts and minds together and find out what exactly is going on here. Don't tell me in a highly regulated environment we still don't know what the cargo is or we still can't force 
the information out of the investigating authority. Pakistan is there. That's part of it. It's deleted. No, 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 no. It cannot be deleted. Beijing cannot delete it, sir. You can delete it in your system here in Malaysia. It's not like that with US. You can delete it here, but the US fellows will have it. I just, I, it's part of the Malaysian deleted document. Yes, Malaysia can delete it and say, I don't know. But what about the receiving end? This is very, very important, you know. We, we seem to be just exploring within Malaysia, but we are not contacting the authorities the other side because they are very equally frustrated. But they should be able to tell also. But you need to go through the proper channels to find out. Okay, I am giving all this information, ladies and gentlemen. I was in Malaysia Alliance for 34 years. I was dealing with crisis and management and BBC contacted me at around 8 o'clock in the morning on the 8th to ask me for my views and I told them, sorry guys, I am no more there. But actually they wanted my own opinion about it. The only thing I did was, I told Bernama subsequently because Bernama was asking me why is it it's so difficult to get information from Malaysia Airlines. I said, sorry, they don't owe you any information. They have to give the information to the family members. You contact the investigating authority. I need to tell them that. Okay, so uh, you have some ideas how we can proceed on the cargo matter? Because that is a missing link here. You can talk about everything, flight plans, blah, blah, blah. Cargo still not resolved yet. That could be the missing link, my opinion. Any other questions from the floor? May I? Was there? Gentlemen, here ask a question first. Yeah. I'll come back to you. Right, my name is Tan Mizian Wang. Sorry, uh, I just want to ask you one, one question. Uh, do you think this uh, accident had impact our domestic political condition? Because we can see the current government act like it has uh, act like severe for our country for this case. Uh, but uh, so as their efforts uh, advertised, uh, advertised at the radio and also the, uh, the television. Uh, but on the other hand, we know that the government are very weak. But the information is not uh, uh, go to the go to the society. So, what is uh, uh, your opinion about this? Merdeka survey uh, done some time ago which said that only 24 or 26% of those surveys with their sample uh, trusted or was satisfied with the government's explanation. So I think you are right in the early days, I think certainly the first one week um, after a tragedy, it is very difficult for anybody to criticize the government of the day. The government of the day as incumbents in any country benefits from crisis and emergencies because they are in power. So that was the first one week you are right. But after some time, Malaysians also have some high standards and Twitter and Facebook and everybody knows what's happening. They also, they also become critical as if, are you kidding? Which explains why the survey was done maybe two months later. I am sure that if you did a survey today, 100 days later, I wonder uh, how many percent would say they are doing a good job. Certainly below 24%. Any other question? My question is, in the first place, was there a crash or not? <laughs> if you ask me, technically, common sense, uh, logic of deduction, in the scientific sense of Occam's principle, the simplest form of explanation to me, there was no crash. 
So what happened to 280 people? <laughs> It's James Bond's uh, responsibility. <laughs> One of them is your friend, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> your friend has disappeared, I assume. I didn't hear you. Um, why do we need the truth? It's not just closure for the families. We need the truth because we assume that 239 people are, are no longer around. We need to know the truth in order that civil aviation can learn from it and that it will never happen again. So that these memories of these 239 can be remembered. Maybe we have a protocol, and I need three hundred people to work on civil aviation safety in the future, and that's why the truth is very, very necessary. Then there's some benefit, something positive out of it, and that rely on the civil society to keep pushing for that case. Otherwise, it will be forgotten, and it's already reaching it. So please keep that. Thank you. That is a good note to end on. We are looking for the truth and we hope that even though we did not find many answers tonight, but we can avoid um, any similar incidents from happening again. Um, once again, I would like to thank our panelists for being here tonight. Before you leave, I would just like to highlight to you the ushers have passed out a little response card. If you could fill it up and go to the counter behind, they will give you a free book. Uh, we also like to thank our media partner, uh, The Rocket and Malaysia Kini.